kill Snapchat. So I'm not sure if this is a universal constant, but I know that I've gone through it, and I know most of my friends have gone through it, a quarter-life crisis, where you're basically in your 20s and you don't know what to do with your life. It's like our early years are all about play and exploration, and then very quickly we're indoctrinated into this industrial machine by our parents and the education system. It suddenly becomes, what do you want to do with your life? Pick one. It starts off with questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up, Billy? And then, <laughs> and then as you're going through the set curriculum that everyone else is going through, you tend to find that you're better at certain subjects than others, and you enjoy certain subjects better than others. So that when you get to high school, you start having electives, um, and very limited electives. It's like, you know, choose, you can kind of like shape your curriculum a little bit, but not much. You get to pick which subjects you want to do. And at that stage in your life, often you, you choose your electives based on what your friends are doing in high school. <laughs> um, so if your friends are all doing maths, then you'll do maths. If your friends are all doing, you know, sewing, you'll do sewing. And then suddenly there's people at the schools called career counsellors. And do you remember those little uh, concentric circle charts? Like each industry have a has a different chart with all the different roles in it. And then very quickly it becomes a matter of like, oh, HSC or whatever it's called now, where you basically have to get a really good mark and study really well so you can get a good uh, score to get into university. But even with university, like choosing a degree, it's like you've got a limited set of choices. I mean, there's like, you know, hundreds of degrees potentially, but it's still very limited. Um, they're kind of dictating what you learn and where you end up. I mean, basically for the first 20 years of your life, or first like quarter of your life, you're being influenced by all these external forces and forced down this specialization funnel to end up being a cog in the global machine. <laughs> okay, so one of my uh, favorite analogies is kind of like comparing the human species to ant colonies. So in ant colonies, you know how they have different uh, castes? They have a physical caste system, like soldier ants, worker ants. I tried to look up a study then trying to work out um, how are ants determined? Like, how, how do you determine what is a soldier ant and what's a worker ant? Because they're all coming from the same queen. They're all from the same mother. It sounds like it's a bit of a combination of genetics, uh, nurture, and nature. So in the larvae, depending on like the size of the colony and what they need, they will and, the, and the temperature and stuff, they'll develop in different ways. But regardless, in an ant colony, obviously ants don't get to determine whether they're a soldier or a worker. That's determined by their physical traits. And so they're slotted into a role in their ant colony, not by choice. I would argue in human society it's fairly similar, like I think uh, where we end up in our roles and also our behaviours and our identity is largely influenced by the people around us and the inputs we receive. <laughs> and just like ants, all humans are dealt a certain hand of cards when they're born. I mean it's a massive influence like your genetics but also where you're born, the time area you're born in and basically the context of your Like whether you're born with a disability or not, uh, black or white, uh, developed nation or developing nation, rich parents, poor parents, um, 1800s or today and which political system. And then obviously your parents, like whether they're middle class, upper class or poor, um, whether they're divorced or not, whether they're nerds or hippies, um, basically their entire life and what they're doing right now, their occupations, massive influence on you. Like both my parents are retired now, they were teachers pretty much their entire lives. So my dad was a math teacher, mum was a primary school teacher. Um, they're your typical middle class family, I think. Um, and so that's had a massive influence on me. So with my dad being a math teacher and both my parents being teachers, obviously like I was first in the class every year in primary school to high school in maths and science and physics and those type of classes. And then because they're middle class and they have like a mortgage and debt, like that's the whole point of the middle class. The middle class uh, strives to be the upper class, the, the rich people. So they're constantly talking about money. So throughout primary school, I think I wanted to be a vet to help animals. Um, and then in high school, it was this idea of like becoming an actuary because I was involved a lot of maths. And you know, first year out of uni, they'd be on 120 grand a year. Then I met my good mate Tristan in about year 11 or year 12. And we basically always talked about changing the world and you know, uh, kind of very quickly realized that jobs are slavery and that entrepreneurship is the way to go. Then you get to university, and I only really went because parents like want a degree. All the all parents say, you know, you must get a degree. You got to get a degree to get a job because jobs are important and degrees are important because you need the degree to get the job. But university, I think, is a major milestone for most people, partly because you're no longer indoctrinated by your parents. You're surrounded by a lot of different people from different backgrounds and different ideas, and you have a lot of free time and you're exposed to a lot of drugs. Okay, sorry, that's my life story. <laughs> um, now let's get into this idea of like um, people typically either maybe in like their last year of uni or like shortly after university, they're like, shit, what am I going to do with my life? Maybe it's just me, but those people that go like from high school to like straight into say an accounting degree, then straight out of university into a, you know, an, an accountancy job, I don't think those people are very self-actualized. <laughs> those people I know tend to struggle with like what they want to do. Like it's 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 a big confronting thing to be like, okay, now you've got your degree, what job do you want to go do? Because you have to do that 40 hours a week. So typically they'll get their undergrad degree, they might try and get a job, they might get a job and hate it, or they might not be able to get a job. Then they go back to university, do a postgrad degree, repeat the process, and then end up doing something entirely different. And then there's rare few people who really want to change the world, particularly during their university years. They've had all sorts of free-thinking ideas and they really want to make an impact on the world. And then they realize they don't have the money and resources to do that and it's really hard. So they end up in bullshit jobs because they need money to survive. They need money to pay rent. They need money to buy clothes and you know, buy food. This is why basic income would be great. But let's talk about a different idea to fix it. Well, imagine if we all grew up with like um, AR glasses, so from, from birth essentially, we were, we were growing up and this system was constantly watching it. We almost had like a personal AI that was helping us through our life. 
And even if we actually start wearing these hourglasses in our 20s, um, what it could actually do is help guide us through decisions and guide us through trying to work out like what we want to do with our lives, try and work out what we're good at and what we're passionate about. Perhaps this AI watches for a while and kind of learns what you're interested in, learns what your passions are, learns where you might be really good at, um, and then just it can maybe start throwing you little challenges to test you. In addition, you can actually tell this AI like what your big goals are, what you want to do with your life, what the big world-changing idea. Once you come across it, you're like, I really want to do this, now help me achieve that. And then rather than being this massive, big, daunting task that's like too scary and too, like you don't even know where to start with it because it's such a huge thing, the AI could break it down for you and just guide you through to that goal. It's almost like a gamified layer for your life, for finding your purpose, for finding your passion, for finding what you want to do. Um, where you can kind of like let the AI learn what you're really good at and help find your passion. And once you've found it, then you can give it a go and work backwards. On a personal level, I think people would really love this because they wouldn't, they wouldn't feel like they're being specialized and boxed into bullshit jobs where they have to just work for the man. Um, they'd actually be happy because they find contentment and passion and purpose. Um, although the funny analysis here is that just like you a how you A-B test websites, where you test two versions to see which ones converts better, this is, would kind of be like AI A-B testing humans. <laughs> like right now our entire kind of like education system and, and uh, workforce is really kind of like, it's self-organizing with the incentive around money. I mean, if it's a lot of money in being a lawyer and a lot of demand, then people will become lawyers. But then that means that we end up with like a lot of the same type of people and we also end up with like oversupply. So you end up with like, you know, if there's a lot of demand for lawyers and everyone becomes a lawyer, then you've got an oversupply. So with this system, it sounds a little bit evil, but it could actually be used for good things. Um, the AI could kind of become like a sorting hat in Harry Potter, where it kind of like optimizes the human species and puts people in particular roles where they're needed. Because if you analyze this from a very macro level, like treating the entire species as an ant colony, really what you're going to do is optimize those people, optimize the resources, and the resources are human brains, their skill sets, and their time. If you have too many lawyers and you have too many people doing bullshit jobs and you have too many people not working on their passion projects, instead working for the money, 40 hour a week, uh, you know, then you, you're wasting resources, it's not optimized. So this kind of like AI sorting hat or this like AR kind of um, AI personal assistant gamified life would help you find your purpose and your passions and guide you towards your end goals and remove that quarter life crisis concern. And then on a macro level, this AI sorting hat essentially like optimizes the human species for the perfect colony as well as giving everyone an equal footing and equal opportunities in life. Snappy thoughts, our future.